Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna be doing a puzzle streak, which is essentially me solving puzzles, and if I get one wrong, I lose. And this series is gonna be designed to help you guys solve puzzles and get better at chess. If you don't know who I am, my name is Reese Thompson. I'm a candidate chess master and a full-time chess teacher, and my goal is to help you guys get better so I'm gonna be discussing these puzzles, how I would try and solve them, how I see the position, and what I just kind of pick up on as I'm solving the puzzles. So let's get started. In this position, I notice that the king is vulnerable, and I always look for attacks on the king at first, so I find this move queen f2 pretty easily, attacking the king, and well, it's just checkmate. Again, I'm looking for attacks on the king, I look at the knight, look at the bishop, and then I see that the queen can come to e7, so and it's guarded by the knight. And then I see queen takes g7. And at first I see these queens attacking each other, but the rook protects, so that's not too good. But again, same process as before. We're going for this, uh, what I like to call in-the-face checkmate. Your queen is attacking the king, and somebody just protects the king. So in-the-face checkmate. All right, he just captured our knight. We could capture him, and that would be maybe a good move, but I think a better move to play would be to go after his king. We would take this this knight, and then we would capture the pawn back on c3, creating a fork where uh, we attack two pieces at once. He has to save his king, and then we can just simply capture the rook in the corner. All right, now this king is looking very suspicious on a3. At first glance, I'm looking for a checkmate, maybe, you know, this check here, king here, but I'm not really finding a checkmate in this position, but I do see that the king and rook are actually on the same line here. So maybe we could take advantage of that. We could check and then actually just check on a4 and then try to just simply capture the rook on f4 with a winning position there because we have an, a couple of extra pawns. Okay. All right, this king looks very uh, open, right? Look at these lines to the king. Notice our queen already guards the, the eighth rank, right? The, the eighth line here. So maybe we could go down to the seventh rank and attack the king. And now the king is on d8. We're just gonna have to find a good move to attack the king. I'm thinking just queen f8, checkmate. There's a couple of different checkmates in one there, so. All right. Well. We have an attack on his queen. Obviously, his rook guards it. But I think this whole puzzle, the whole idea of this puzzle is that when that rook moves, we actually have a battery with our queen and, bish our queen and rook. So we can simply just capture the bishop. Very easy, nice, and smooth. All right, I like the position of our rook and queen. We have this other rook on the open file. Again, I'm looking for checks, so I always look at even crazy moves that attack the king, and I think that this works. We just take, and instead of sliding this rook down, we just slide the other rook down to attack the king, and there's no escape. This is a common pattern to take advantage of this bishop pinning our knight. Normally, our knight wouldn't be able to move, but we have a, an in-between move, and we simply just capture the bishop. Okay, so the king is always what we're aiming at. I see this queen kind of looking through the bishop here, so I intuitively just want to play this move. Um, I'm attacking the king, but at the same time, I'm trying to make a passed pawn, a pawn that has no pawns in its way. And if I could push it down the board, I'm going to be making a queen. So very, very dangerous um, type of idea here. And the question is, do I just move my queen or do I play bishop d5? I don't think it really matters. I'm going to go bishop d5. Okay. Queen takes. Now, this is an idea where you have both queens just kind of staring at each other here. So this is a very common tactical pattern. We move the bishop out of the way, taking the pawn, and then we're able to capture the queen, uh, winning it for free. Okay. Now, this is also kind of a common pattern. When you have a protected pass pawn, or a, a pass pawn, not a protected one, we want to push it down the board. How do we do that? Well, obviously it doesn't work just pushing it. We need to support it by putting the rook here. And it's very important that if he captures, we were actually threatening to capture his rook. So we're doing two different ideas at once. This one, we're looking at the king. I see knight takes knight f3 and simply just capture the queen, winning a, an entire queen there. 
This one's a common uh, attacking pattern. We're going to capture this pawn in e6. We're going to capture the rook. And now he walked right into this rook attacking this pawn here with a checkmate. All right, this is going to be king and pawn endgame uh, type of idea. This one's very simple. You know, when you're up a pawn in a king and pawn endgame, after we move for king here, we're pretty much just guaranteed to going to be winning. All right, this looks like an Alapin Sicilian, a weird Alapin Sicilian, where white's gone c3 and d4. But as you notice here, white has an unprotected bishop, and unprotected pieces can be taken advantage of. So we're going to be playing queen to a5, attacking the bishop. And after knight c3 to protecting, we're actually going to remove the, uh, the piece that protects the bishop, and then we capture. Simple as simple does. Now, guys, I will go until I mess up. So uh, we're on 16 right now. We're going to continue going and continue doing puzzles until I mess up. So if the video is 30 minutes long, so be it. All right, so knight b5, attacking our queen. Now... We want to move the queen out of harm's way, but where should we put it? Let's think about this. We're also counterattacking his queen. I, I wasn't even thinking about that at first. I didn't even see it. But this is actually an important point. When we capture his queen, guys, we're going to be protecting the queen. So we just simply capture the queen, and we picked up um, the knight as interest on the deal. I notice immediately that the king is exposed, and I notice that the knight is in the same line, so we actually can take advantage of that. We can just go bop, bop, and take the knight, and we are in a winning end game there. All right. Not picking up anything immediately here. I notice that these knights are on the same line. Um, not too easy to take advantage of that. Okay, but I see the idea now. The knight, you know, we have pressure on this knight. The bishop is protecting. But we can try to remove the, the bishop from protecting this knight here in the middle of the board. So let's go for that. And now we can simply capture the knight for free. All right, so this knight is kind of holding our two pawns down the board. We want to rush these pawns down and make queens. If we just push the pawn, we lose it. So we need to protect it. And now we just go b6 trying to advance our pawns. It's very important that we try and push our pawns as fast as we can down the board so that we don't allow you know him to make a queen before us, right? Okay, we're attacking his queen, and he's attacking ours. Now, in positions in which both pieces are hanging, you want to try and get rid of your piece with some interest, with some extra, um, you know, lose your piece for the most you can, uh, you can get, right? So in this case, I think just capturing the rook makes a lot of sense, and then winning the queen, right? Because we got a rook and a queen for a queen. All right, immediately I noticed that the queen and the rook are on the same line, but I can't really take advantage of that. Moving here doesn't work. But now that I notice that the queen and the rook can actually team up really well, I use the rook here, and then I simply just use the queen here. Checkmate. The queen takes the pawn. All right, I'm looking for moves that would potentially attack the king. I don't see any. The knight can't do anything. The queen can't. Then I look at the queen. It's, it's in my territory. Can I attack it in any way? Yeah. There's actually a really nice move here. I move the rook here, and I attack the queen, and if you look at it, there's no squares for the queen to move to. The knight was guarding these uh, crucial c5 square. So we just win the queen. Okay. I want to push this pawn down the board. Um, question is, should I capture this pawn in h5? Um, let's think about this. If I go b6, and he captures my pawn, and I go b7... He's going to have to put his rook on b2. And then I guess I put my rook on a8. And I think this is probably the smartest variation to kind of go for here. I need to keep pushing my pawn in order to get queens as fast as possible. As possible, Right. All right. He's threatening some rook h1 idea, but maybe I slide my king to f2 and I'm surviving there. Ah, the king is open. And it's on the same line as the rook. I actually have a nice move, queen e5. And then I don't capture this knight here. I think I just capture the rook. Seems simple. And I don't have to calculate anything else. Okay. All right. When you don't have a lot of pieces on the board, you want to be calculating what happens when you get to the king and pawn end game, guys. This is really important. This is how higher rated players are, are better than a lot of lower rated players. They just kind of calculate a little bit better in the end game. So takes, takes... I move my king to d6 to try and 
corral this past pawn. And then maybe I could start using my past pawns down the board here. So let's think about this. Takes, takes, king here, king here, king here, king a4. And then e5. King a5, e4, b6. I'm, I'm not queening with the check there. I think f5 might queen with the check in this position, which is a really important concept. Uh, this is a Deveretsky kind of concept. There's a very famous in-game book called Deveretsky's In-Game Manual or whatever. I think I have it around here, actually. <laughs> right here. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, it's actually a really famous book, and I've been going through that recently. So hopefully... I will be able to just kind of intuitively play this position. King c3 is such a bad move. He really should go like this, and um, we would be we would have an actual in game there. But I think that concept of trying to m move the king into the check, the checking square of the queen is a very very powerful concept, and I think that was how you win there. All right, um, this one I think is a pretty uh, just. Sacrifice to open the king. So we sacrifice on a7. We bring our queen in to b6. And notice we have this line chopped off. So all we need to do is chop the a line off. Checkmate. Same concept here. We just sacrifice our queen. And if he were to capture, we would have captured and we would have had the same concept. But instead, he goes for this, this checkmate where we just put our queen in his face. Okay. Um, I'm going to slide my rook down to d8. My bishop's in the way, so... I sacrifice my bishop, I put my rook on d8, and for fancy reasons, I'll make a rook for checkmate. All right, let's think about this. We have the queen coming to f7, maybe attacking both pieces here. That looks actually really, really strong. I don't really see any reason why I shouldn't capture this rook for free. And I don't think this works from our opponent. We capture, he captures, and then I think we just play queen g3 here. And very important that we capture with the king there, guys. Capture with the king after he captures the queen. So, okay, this king looks very suspicious. We could play bishop b7 and then something like g5, and the king is actually trapped <laughs> and getting checkmated here. Very hilarious. All right, so we're stopping his pawn, but our pawn's trying to go down to the end of the board as well here. So if I go b7, he queens, I take, take, I can just make a queen. So I think b7 wins here. We just simply capture his queen, and then we make our own queen. Okay, this is a common tactical idea here. Um, so if I were to capture, he would capture my queen. So I think it's very important to remove our queen from danger. We capture his queen, then we capture this. This is a very important tactical idea. We, our bishops are attacked, but my knight guards the bishop. So if I were to if he were to capture my bishop, I could get my knight out of danger, effectively winning a piece there, guys. All right. Um, so I think this in-game is completely winning for white. It's very important to understand when you trade into an in-game, what is actually happening. In this position, I think we just exchange the queens. This pawn, we don't have to worry about. We need to get rid of this pawn. And then we simply just block this pawn and we take it. And we have a winning king and pawn in-game there. All right, this is a nice um, nice idea here to checkmate. We, we capture on f6. Now, there is another idea here I want to you guys to be familiar with. It doesn't work in this position. Black's threatening his own checkmate ideas, but just I want to show you the concept. Putting a knight on g6 and putting the rook on d8 is a very normal concept to sometimes get a checkmate because Black can't really move any of his pieces. But in this position, it's actually knight takes f6 and following it up with rook d8 checkmate. So another nice concept there. So I want to try and push this h-pawn down the board. So I think we need to start with bishop d4 check to guard the queening square. And now let's think about if we push the h-pawn, then he can go king g8. Which So we need to bring our king into f5 to then support our pawn pushing down the board. All right, I think a huge mistake here would be to capture and let him have a pass pawn. So let's not do that, guys. <laughs> let's capture with the F pawn, probably. Um, 
And now he pushes his f-pawn down the board. Let's think about this. If I go g5, he can play king f5, but then we can capture. And if he captures our g-pawn, then I could play king e4 there. It's a very messy position, but it's all about if he can get his king into our position or not. It's kind of in, we're kind of both in almost zook swung here. If I back my king up, I might be losing this position because he has his passed pawn. So I think I go g5, and then I'm able to capture this pawn on d5, and I, I think I'd be winning that king and pawn in game. Okay. It's getting into the tough positions now. We're going to have to really start calculating and play some good moves. We're at 37 right now. So, okay. First instinct is to capture this pawn and bring the queen into the attack. But I don't know if that's working, actually. Now that I think about it, you know, there's there's actually a really cool idea here. I think the move is actually queen h3. I know that looks insane. If pawn takes, I'm going to capture an f3 with a check. If it goes to the corner, I actually have a, um, a nice Anastasia checkmate with rook takes h2 checkmate. If he plays takes knight f3, if he goes king h or king f1, then... I at least can take the queen there. So, ah, dang it. I made a mistake. Okay, so let's look at what was the actual answer. First of all, I kind of want to turn on the engine and just kind of see uh, what I should have done here. So apparently queen h3 is the second best move, but it's actually not good at all. Apparently um, queen f2 is holding the position down. That's, that is, nope, there's other moves here as well. It takes check king f1 if i take the queen knight f5 is a good defensive move here king g1 would be completely losing because i would play knight f3 back and i'd win the position so knight f5 is the only reason why my idea does not work very interesting guys um let's look at what was the actual answer so knight sacrifice on f3 pawn takes and then bringing the queen to h3. I think it's actually just a little bit more simple than what I was giving it credit for. So sometimes it's to, it's uh, maybe in your... Uh, sometimes when you're told the answer is a, a puzzle, you start to look at all these crazy moves, and um, maybe I just got too involved with the queen h3 move. So anyway, I hope you and guys enjoyed this, this type of content. If you do, let me know in the comments below. I also created a chess discord. I'm going to post a link up at the top uh, right. And then also in the description, you can join that. It's just a community of people that like to play chess and are interested in improving. So if that sounds like you, you can join that chess discord. And other than that, I hope you guys enjoy and I will see you on the next one.